Hi there, it's Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. And since I started this channel, the video I've wanted to do most is how to choose colors for your quilt. Well, today's the day, so stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. So I started making this video on how to choose colors for your quilt and then realized I couldn't really do that unless I talked about color harmony. And then I realized I couldn't really talk about color harmony unless I talked about color. So this is actually number one of a three-part series. This is about color. What exactly is color? So our world is filled with electromagnetic radiation. And on one end, we have gamma rays and X rays. And on the high end, we have microwaves and radio waves. And in between these two, we have the visible spectrum. And humans can see these colors because at the back of our eye, we have cone cells, three different types, one for blue, one for red, one for green. And these three colors make up the primary colors. And through their combination, you can make all the colors of the rainbow. You're probably saying, Karen, that's not what we learned in kindergarten. The primary colors are blue, red, and yellow. Well, this is where color begins to get confusing. These primary colors are called additive primaries because when you add all the colors together, you get white. And when I was growing up, the only time you ever heard of this system was when you were talking about TV sets. But nowadays, with computer screens, smartphones, iPads, digital publishing, and Photoshop, everyone uses it and is referred to as RGB. Primary subtractive colors take advantage of the light that's reflected off the objects. So with these glass bottles, white light shines on it and the green and red light is absorbed. And what remains is what we see reflected. And we see this as blue. We most commonly see it in the printing industry, and we probably all have a printer that has these cartridges. We refer to this system as CMYK. But long before modern science, people studied color. When Sir Isaac Newton put his mind to the task, the color wheel with the red, yellow, blue primary colors was the result. And then others got into the game, coloring his black and white drawing. And even though it has been proved to be incorrect, it's still in common usage today, mainly because it's a really neat system. So the three primaries are red, yellow, blue, and they combine together to make orange, purple, and green. And then you combine the primary colors with the secondary colors to make the tertiary colors, which have these very scientific names, red violet, blue violet, blue green, yellow green, orange yellow, and red orange and together they all make the color wheel. What Newton also said was that every warm color had an opposite cold color. Like I said, a really neat and tidy system. Now you're probably saying, okay, that's all fine and dandy, Karen, but where do all these colors come from? So all those colors, which are a combination of primary, secondary, and tertiary colors are called hues. I've just chosen a random eight here for an example. So if we take those hues and we add white, we get tints. If we add black to those same hues, we get shades. And if we add gray, which is a combination of black and white, to the same hues, we get tones. And this is where those flat color wheels, or maybe you see one like this, have a hard time explaining the whole story. Because color is not flat. Color has three dimensions and is shaped more like a cone. The hues of the color wheel are around the top edge. The tones sit on the top surface and fade to white in the middle. The shades are on the outside bottom cone and fade to black at the bottom. And throughout the inside are all the variety of tones that fade to gray on the middle axis. So just to illustrate this, we're gonna start with a hue that I'm gonna call aqua. And if we sliced into that color cone, this is what it would look like approximately. It would have the hue in the top left corner along the edge. Then you would have the tones getting progressively whiter along the top to the center. You would have the shades along the outside edge going to black at the bottom point. And all those tones in the middle until they fade to gray. It's the same with every hue. Let me show you another slice. 
this time with a hue that I'm going to call coral. So as a quilter, you need to know three things about color. One, you need to know about hue. So hues we've seen before, they're just the colors on the color wheel. It's the primary colors and their combinations. White and black and all the grays in between are not considered colors because they have no hue. Two, you need to know about saturation. So a pure hue is called fully saturated. As we add white and gray, our hue loses more and more of its color till it's finally desaturated. But as quilters, we don't often get our color as a solid piece. It's usually in a pattern with some other colors and a neutral mixed in. Here is a palette of oranges, all from one color line. The palette has a nice bright orange color with a shade of the same hue, a yellow and then a background of white. So the orange in each one of these fabrics is quite saturated, but it's the presence of white and how much white that desaturates it. So I like to go through my fabrics and organize them from the most saturated to the least saturated. And three, you need to know about value. We use a grayscale to describe value. Black being the lowest value and white being the highest. So the lowest value black is at the bottom of the cone. And as you go up the cone of color, you get higher and higher values. This is a good exercise to practice value. Go to the paint store and get the set of chips that are all from the same hue. These chips are all from the 500 series. And then just practice organizing them where you think the common values are. Continue sorting them until you feel that you've got all your values on the same level. And then take out your camera and take a black and white photo. How did you do? There is one final complications with value. Not all hues have the same value. Yellow has a much higher value than blue. So when you're mixing yellow fabrics with blue fabrics, your yellow fabrics will be inherently higher in value than your blues. With hue, saturation, and value, we can describe almost any color. So if we wanted to describe the color in the white circle, we could call it a desaturated aqua with a low value. So I'll talk more about saturation and value in my next video on Color Harmony. I'm gonna leave it here today. So thank you for joining me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you hit that bell, you'll be notified when the next video is ready. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So take care and I'll see you next time.